Eduardo Lopez tossed seven strong en route to his first big league win. And Trey Turner was dynamite again, collecting three more hits, eight total bases. Tanner Roark gets the call for getaway day. It's another scorcher in the district. Yeah, there's great news around the ballpark today. Number 34, there it is, Bryce Harper. Back in the lineup, Bryce took BP this morning in the cage. Feels good, and that's like what they saw. And so he's going to bat third. Bob and FP, a chance for the Nats to beat the Braves and win a series. They've beaten Atlanta seven out of eight this year, but getting Harper in the lineup, it has kind of a domino effect, and other guys are back where they should be in that starting eight. Yeah, it's nice to get him back, and hopefully he's had a nice little rest, kind of mentally and physically, and that neck is a lot better. Dusty went and watched him hit in the cage. He said he was good to go, and it was either play today or go on the DL. When you go to Colorado, you can't be short a man. So Bryce Harper in the lineup today. We're excited. Yeah, very excited about Bryce being back in there. Then the guy hitting a couple of spots in front of him continues to impress as Trey Turner has come to the big leagues, shown he belongs. He's well over 100 at bats now into this stint, and we're just loving what we're seeing. Well, I think a lot of times you get a little too caught up in his speed and, and short change him on the ability he has as a baseball yeah. player. I mean, he can play wherever you put him, second base, shortstop, center field. He's done a nice job of getting on base. Look what he's done this series. So, yeah, he can fly, and, yeah, we talk about that a lot. But oftentimes with speed guys, that's the only element they bring. Trey Turner is a baseball player, and he's proven to be a great leadoff hitter so far. Yeah, the Braves getting to see a whole bunch of him. They saw Tanner Roark one time earlier this year. He went seven against them. Seven times seven with no runs given up this year. The most steady of all Nat starters goes to work in just a minute. Nationals baseball on Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you by Mercedes Benz the best or nothing 
and by Dominion, depend on us for more than energy. That's where all of us adults would like to be right now. But we're at the ballpark, and so we've got some clouds moving by here and there, but it is sizzling. 97 to game time, heat index 107, and hopefully the clouds from time to time will render all of us some relief. Nick Markakis in that never five spot again for the Braves today. He likes Nationals Park as an Oriole and a Brave, has always hit well here. Freddie Freeman is having a monster series. Four homers his last four games. And the Braves have done some pretty good offensive things and almost staged an amazing late comeback last night. Tanner Roark, they get today. I remember his last start, he beat Madison Bumgarner and the Giants one to nothing, went seven shutout, gave up just five hits, 105 pitch effort. Right last on time with strike one of 135. Last start, his fastball average 92, slider curveball change to go with it. The Nats are 12 and three in his last 15 starts and in that period Tanner is 10 and three with a 284. Late swing by Ender Inciarte. Two for nine in this series with a base on balls and career. Two for five against the Nats starter. Roark four and one career against the Braves. Eight starts. 13 games overall. Check swing. 178 ERA against the Atlanta Ball Club. Braves are 12th in the league in hitting, last in baseball in runs and home runs. And by the way, the White Sox already have two runs off Tom Kohler at Miami. They're in the second inning there. They lost last night, and the Nats are up eight and a half. They lost, in the East. They lost more in the game last night. Yeah, they did. John Carlos Stanton on the DL. I think Brad Hand, one of their starters, also. So trying to make it a five and three homestand on the way to Colorado. One ball, two strikes. And right up the middle. Tanner came in with a breaking ball and Ender Inciarte didn't try to do too much with it. Well, here's your Nats defense today. Heisey Rivera and some new kid they called up in right. Harper, Espinosa Rendon, left side, Turner Robinson, right side, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Bryce is back. Good to see Bryce back in right field. Adam Conley, the Miami pitcher who went on the DL. So, Lead off man aboard. Rendon was going to hit third today. So when Price made it into the lineup, that kind of settled everything down. After Wilson Ramos, the cleanup guy who sets up away for Eric Ibar. Rendon on the grass at third. High bar high in the air. And drifting toward left center is Chris Heisey. Ben Revere right there with him. First out of the game. Game notes for you. Trey Turner, five triples since the All-Star break. That's the most in all of baseball. So look out. Cesar Hernandez, Jake Lamb, and some of the other guys ahead of him. Freddie Freeman. Equaling a career high, he's done that in this series against Nets pitching. And Ben Revere, three of his last four games have gone multi-hit. Revere six for his last 15 overall. Here's Freeman, seven for 11 over a four-game hitting streak, make it eight out of 12. That line drive is going to move Vince Arte over to third. Bryce bolts a throw over there on one hop, and the Braves have runners at the corners, one out. So they're coming out hacking against Tanner Roar. Well, Freddie Freeman loves to play against the Nats. It's well chronicled. And look at him pull his hands in on that pitch from Tanner. And pretty aggressive base running. You like what Ender and Ciarte did, challenging Bryce Harper's arm. Looks like a pretty good throw. There's some, some talk that it hurts when he throws that kink in his neck, but not a bad throw by Bryce. Yeah, so 
as you mentioned yesterday when he took a low pitch out of here Friday night a change up elevated where do you pitch Freddie Freeman my goodness maybe you avoid him Matt Kemp in the series three for eight two walks in RBI. And some success career against Tanner Roar. Three for six, two home runs. If you think and keep the ball down here, get a grounder, see what happens. There's a tapper, runner coming home, Roar throws and out as Tanner just whipped around and threw it to Ramos to get in Ciarte. Well, Tanner, one of the better fielding pitchers in baseball, we talk about it all the time. He gets a tricky little in between hop here. And how many times have you seen a pitcher miss that? Then he stumbles on the throw. And I just don't think there's any percentage in stopping if you're Ender Inciarte. Slide through the base and hope the catcher misses the tag. But if you stop and let him tag you, you have no chance of scoring. Tanner, a great athlete, has always fielded his position so well. So the fifth hitter is Nick Markakis. I mean, the base running the last three innings for the Braves has been questionable at least. Yeah, runner picked off a guy trying to take an extra bag and now that. I just hate to see guys giving out up like that. They slide in hard to home. You never know. He might drop it. The ball might come out. Who knows? But when you stop and just let him tag you, you have no chance of scoring. Play hard. Way inside to Marcakis, 2 0. It's Rosin Day. Oh, yeah. Maybe some other foreign substances, too. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that sun blazing out there right now. That's a strike. Tanner with the fastball at 93, two and one. And a ball well hit to center. Ben Revere stalking it. So the Braves do some pretty good hacking in the first inning, but Roark is out of the frame. Trey Turner coming up. 338 his last 17 games.
fourth in runs, second in home runs. Jerry Turner leading the way in this series. He's six for ten all over the place. So as we mentioned earlier, until Bryce was put into the lineup, Anthony Rendon was going to hit third today. He's been slugging. He's hitting for high average. Anthony Rendon on base percentage is up to 350. Home run, couple of RBIs, a walk in this series. The Nats face 24 year old rookie Tyrell Jenkins, two and two, seventh start. At two and one with the 338 in his first six starts. He was a reliever for a bit. Last start on the ninth against Milwaukee. He was the winner, gave up one run on three hits over six. Turner goes up hacking, extra bases again. To the wall in left, Kemp picks it up. And Trey Turner is seven for 11 against Atlanta pitching this weekend. Well, there's the double he needed last night. Let's go, Trey, tight it up. How good is Trey Turner, folks? There goes the no hitter, a double for Trey Turner. There's the cycle. Just took him an extra at bat. But he'll take the leadoff double, and who's hotter than Trey Turner? 636 in the series. Well, that changes things in a hurry. Chase Darno has to hang near the third base bag. Eric Ibar playing up the middle behind Turner. For Ben Revere, if he can go the other way, there's about 80 feet of ground ball room. Let's see how Jenkins pitches him. It's away, but it's way out there. Jenkins has had control issues. 27 walks, 20 strikeouts in 41 innings. He was the other player Atlanta got from St. Louis a couple of years ago with Shelby Miller when they traded Jason Hayward. Revere lays down a bunt. Ball thrown down the right field line by Anthony Recker. The Nats have the lead. Revere stops at second, and this team continues to play some exciting baseball. Well, Anthony Recker came out kind of casually after this. I mean, maybe not casually, but he waved everybody off, and I thought, man, he's going to really have to hurry, and then he had to rush the throw, and he just launches a serious grenade down the right field line. And that's up one nothing. here's Bryce Harper. And now a big ovation for the number three guy. So Bryce can relax here. There's already a run in, a man in scoring position. Time to step in, have a good A-B, and welcome back to the lineup after a five-game absence that really was over a period of eight days. By the way, they gave Revere a hit on the bunt, and then the error sent him to second. Harper takes ball one. I mean, you just see how the speed with those two at the top of the order is affecting defenses. Anthony Recker had to hurry right there and threw it down the line because of the speed of Revere. Harper, right field, the foul. Ball had some hook on it, but he hit it extremely well. Counts 1-1. One, one. Yeah, the initial lineup today didn't have Bryce in it. And then Bryce went down to the tunnel, hit in the cage, passed all the tests, said he wanted to play, and he's in there. And it was getting to be that time where he either had to play or go on the DL. After 10 days, you have to go on the DL. And today was, I think, day eight. And there's no way Dusty Baker's club could go to Colorado where you use all your players with just a 24 man roster and wait a couple of more days. One one and Bryce takes it away. Harper just to update his numbers because we haven't given to him in a while. That's what he does against Atlanta over his career. This year, 20 home runs, 57 batted in.
shift on, a lot of room through short. That's a left field swing, and that ball is going and going, and it's at the base of the wall to drive in Ben Revere, and Bryce Harper has a double. 2-0 Washington, RBI number 58. It was a nice smooth swing from Bryce. You were talking about before the game, Carp. You thought he might come back and swing easier because of the injury to his shoulder. I don't know why he forgot to run, but he'll take the double and the RBI. Maybe he thought he had a home run. The way the ball's been carrying. I think he thought that he had a welcome back homer, but he'll take the welcome back double. Nice swing, RBI. Welcome back, Bryce Harper. Had the makeup speed to get into second anyhow. What a start. Wilson Ramos coming off a day off. He was 0 for 4 Friday night, but has hit safely in seven of his last eight games. So uh, I know there's some preparation work going on, but so much for just watching a guy first time through the order. The Nats have come out and attacked him as they face Jenkins for the first time. Well, I think it's important to score early today because as this game goes on with the heat index, it's going to be tough to have any sort of gas left in the tank once you get past around the fifth inning. Ramos up the middle. That's a productive out as Harper goes to third on the first out of the inning. Fans applauding that. Yeah, nice job, Wilson. Good at bats. Interesting story about Jenkins. He committed to Baylor to play football there, and he was supposed to be the successor of guess who? RG3. RG3. Yeah. Chose baseball over football, obviously. Yeah, he's a Texas kid out of Henderson, Texas. Played basketball, baseball, track in high school. Football as well, and baseball scouts actually went to watch him play basketball just to see what his makeup and his demeanor was like his senior year. Infield in, Rendon, another Texas kid. He'll hit that ball well out to center. Harper will score easily. And the efficient offensive Nats have a three on the board here, just like that. Anthony Rendon, RBI number 51. Well, it's got to feel good for Bryce, right? You sit around for over a week, you get back in the lineup, you hit a double, you score a run. You drive in a run, check, 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 and check. Yeah. Yeah, he already got to wing in a throw from right field. Now he's totally involved in the offense. Here's Clint Robinson batting sixth. Tell you what, just the thought of a plane trip to Colorado make you feel a little bit better, won't it? <laughs> Tray tables carry really well on the way out there. They, they just go up so easily. The drink cart, it just carries way farther. 2-0. Off speed in there to Clint, who in his last 16 starts, has driven in 10 runs with three homers and hit 250. Making the rookie work long and hard here, although he's only thrown now with this one coming 15 pitches. But things happening quickly. And Robinson will follow it 3 2. And then Chris Heisey in the seven hole today. Danny Espinosa behind him. Robinson, another base hit as a starter. The Nationals have not had one at bat in this game that hasn't produced something. Double. Single, double, Ramos moves a runner with a grounder, Rendon a sack fly, and now this. They're just producers, Bob. Like Chip Winfield. 
There's a line drive single to right center field. You're wondering if he was going to try to stretch it to two. But Clint Robinson, every time he gets a chance as a starter, seems to do something. I've, I've never looked at his average because when he's in the lineup, he's going to do something important. Now it's Chris Heisey. Three runs on four hits. On the outside, half of the plate for a strike. Chris, a couple of at bats in the series. Those came Friday night. Came in on a double switch. Went 0 for 2. That's an off speed pitch on the other side of the plate. Pat Hoberg, by the way, is the home plate umpire today. Rookie member of this otherwise veteran crew. And the 0-2 with two outs. Heisey off to the right side. Mike Everett, the crew chief, is at first base. There's Pat on a hot day with the gear on. And then Jordan Baker and Tim Timmons second and third. The umpires this time of the year, especially the home plate umpire, they've got some cooling vests they can wear under the gear to keep them conscious out there on these kind of days. It's just so brutal for them. O2 and Heisey taking. They're going to work Tyrell Jenkins up over 20 pitches in this first inning. But we just don't want to stand around on defense for a long time either in these warm games. You want a pitcher that gets you off the field quick. On a pitch inside, turning on it. Bob Henley, a clean pick. We take all the sunscreen again, yep. Vampire third base coach. This at bat from Nissan. Chris Isey fell behind 0 2. Clint Robinson totally flattered by that throw. Heisey with a big rip. One two pitch and <laughs> lunging to get the end of the barrel on that. Hop on the Jeep, go inside the numbers. The Nats, even better than the Cubs against teams from their own division. So some good ball clubs checking in. The Royals, who are four games under 500, have struggled against the East and the West and Interleague. World champions, 11 games out of first place. One two pitch, Heisey, left side, that will get out of play. And he's waging quite a hot afternoon battle here. The yeah, Royals 11 games out of first, but every night after the game, they go in their locker and put their rings on. There's the standings. Eight and a half games up. A season high as far as the advantage for the Nats over whoever the second place team might be. Marlins is a lost three in a row. Mets are at 500. One two to Heisey and he'll hit a three hopper out to the shortstop I bar but a great first inning for the Nats. Turner Revere Harper Rendon producing hits or RBIs.
handshake. Two out of three. How about Ronaldo Lopez last night? His first major league win. Had to hang on for that first major league win. You know what I was thinking about last night driving home when Daniel Murphy handed him the ball. You remember Russ Ortiz handed Dusty the ball and Dusty handed it back. I was hoping that wasn't a jinx, but Ronaldo was fantastic last night. Yeah, that right there. Kept the ball down, kept the Braves off balance, got a lot of ground ball out, some help from his defense. And he packed his bag and he's going to Colorado with us. Tanner Roark, strike one to Gordon Beckham, second inning underway. Beckham 0 for 1 in this series, batting 225. Veteran infielder, most of his career with the White Sox. 242 hitter in seven big league seasons. Roark trying to swing that fastball back. Beard's a good place to dry off your hands. I didn't even think of that. Just thinking that. You can go to your beard on a hot you day. You should. 2-2. Two -two. Jammed him. And Roark picks it off right on the side of the mound. He's retired three straight since the Freddie Freeman hit. Inside, the number's brought to you by Jeep. Look at this. That is really, really hard to do at any level, much less the major leagues. Taking a run and a half off of your ERA from one year to another. Of course, he did a lot of relieving last year, spot starting, exclusively a starter, and I think we all know what's best for him right now. And what's best for Tanner Roark is really best for the ball club. Yeah, he didn't know what he was doing last year. That, that number doesn't surprise me a bit. He was long relief. He was a closer. He was a setup guy, spot starter. But most of all, I think confused, and he'll never admit it, but he was. There's Anthony Recker, the catcher. Never admit it publicly. Recker, a two-run homer here on Friday night. He is four for six career against Tanner Roark. Two and one. Tanner was a quarterback in high school. Class 3A state runner up in 2003 for Wilmington High. So two quarterbacks going at it on the mound today. One of them's got a really good running game to go along with his throwing ability, too. Yes, yeah, pretty good offense. Well, record didn't appear to like the call. Two balls, two strikes. Close. Ramos set up on the outer half. Had to reach back a bit. Mercedes Benz will have a look. Where was the previous one? I like that Wilson tried to frame that right there. Almost the same spot as pitch number four. Payoff pitch with one out. Off. Oh, he struck him out. Anthony Recker thought the pitch was off the plate, tossed his bat, and he's got something to pick up on his way back to the dugout. First row arc strikeout. I think this one was the best pitch of all. It was a swing back fastball. I think Anthony Recker gave up on it, but this came back late and hit Wilson Ramos right where he was set up. A little swing back action. Watch the late movement. Good frame by Wilson. Here's Chase Darno. Picked up by the Braves as a free agent last November. In the Phillies organization last year at Lehigh Valley for 120 games and then 66 with the Phils, where he hit 257.
In the air. Short right for Turner. One, two, three for Tana Roar. How's that for getting your guys right back in the dugout and the other guys right back on the field? Some last night, right? It was getting real boring in the ninth inning. All of a sudden, the Braves Mountain, a serious comeback, and watch this throw by Danny Espinoza to get Eric Ibar at third base. Just an absolute bullet. Good tag by Anthony Rendon. They challenge it. He would remain out. And I'm thinking there's only a handful of shortstops in the major leagues that could make that throw. Danny Espinoza, one of them. Maybe Simmons, Andrelton Simmons, Brandon Crawford comes to mind. Maybe Tulowitzki in his prime, but that was quite a throw by Danny to preserve the victory, the play of the game by far. That was runner on third, nobody out, 7-6 ball game. Yeah. And if he stays at second, Freddie Freeman coming up. They got three outs to bring in the tying run. Espinosa, Roark, and Turner swinging a foul. Were you surprised by his comments after the game? He said, if I had 100 times to do that, I'd do it every time. Well, then you'd make the first out at third 100 times in a row, and that's not a good thing. Yeah. I know what he's saying. Hey, we had the momentum. I thought I was going to make it, but it can't even be that close for me. Espinoza, RBI last night. Danny tried to bunt his first time up, but forced an error on the pitcher. Then he had a clean single for his 57th run batted in later. Going to bring this one with him. Fortunately, foul because he hit it pretty hard toward Freddie Freeman. And I also think the Nats would be okay if he did that 100 more times. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what he's thinking. I've been there, done that. You're getting all excited. You got the momentum. It's like a fast break offense. And you're thinking, I'm going to get to third. And uh oh. One and two to Danny. Hitting 224 from the left side. They want the pitch elevated. That's what Jenkins did. Counts even. That inside pitch will turn his shoulders three and two. I think Tyrell wanted that one. Close. It's a little bit inside.
Enjoying a day off is Jason Worth chatting with Bryce. Big brother, little brother. Who has to feel so good after that first day B and what happened. Driving in a run, then getting driven home. Saying if you do that for 40 more games, you'll be tied with me. <laughs> <laughs> this ball's got some carry to it. High fly foul by Espinosa. Oh, I mean, distance. this thing carries about 340 feet. That was a homer. If it was fair. Espinosa with a walk. Danny works it really well. 37 time he's been passed this year. The Nats have another leadoff man on. All right, kids, it's back to school. Enough of this summer fun stuff. Go back to school, but we'll help you out with the school supply drive right around the corner. It's on Saturday, August 27th. Donate new school supplies at the center field gate from 1030 through the end of the second inning. Rockies in town. This will help D.C. area students in need. So don't forget to make your mark your calendars or make them too if you go back to school Saturday, August 27th. Roark just bends his knees and lays down a perfect sacrifice. Fourth time this year, 18th time in his career pushing Espinosa to scoring position. Getting it done in a hurry. Most popular guy in town right there, Trey Turner. Strike went up attacking first pitch first time and doubled. He's now 26 for his last 75. Over 18 ball games. So the batting average during that time approaching 350. Had him lunging right there in a pop up. Beckham will yield to a shortstop Ibar two outs. Change up from Tyrell Jenkins got him out front. Yeah, we heard a scouting report from the Atlanta guys about him that that might be his best pitch. The change. There's Ben Revere. He laid down a bunt first time with Turner on second. Anthony Recker picked it up and the catcher threw it down the right field line, scoring Turner, getting Ben to second base. And we've made this point many times during the season. We'd like to see Ben use that weapon with his speed more often. And you made this remark a couple of years ago. I remember that these days it seems like fire alarms go off whenever there's a bunt laid down in the infield and some guy can really run. Nobody's kind of go crazy. Nobody bunts anymore. It's like, ah, what do we do with this ball on the ground close to home? Ah. <laughs> Two out, so you're driving somebody in. True. Yeah, that was early in the inning and really got things set up. Harper, Ramos, and Rendon took care of the rest. Revere's going to drive this ball to left center. It's got some carry on it, but tailing back to Matt Kemp. The lead off walk, Danny Espinosa, the second net stranded today. 3 nothing, Washington.
Phelps in the Olympics, a medical procedure called cupping has gotten a lot of attention across the country over the last handful of days. But this procedure has actually been going on in sports and in particular in baseball for years now. Now what this procedure involves is cups being placed on the skin and pulled up to create suction, pulling the skin away from the rest of the body. Some doctors don't buy into its effectiveness, but the players that do really like it. Sammy Solis first started getting cupping a handful of years ago. He's been getting it consistently the last two years on the area around his throwing arm. He said it fe he feels it relieves muscle tension, kind of breaks up all the tightness you feel. He estimated maybe five to six Nats players do it on a regular basis. So it's not just Michael Phelps using this cupping te technique, guys. All right, Dan, thanks with our Coons.com sideline report. Over two million vehicles sold and counting. Tyrell Jenkins, 0 for 10 is a big league hitter. Two hopper to Danny Espinosa. Still hitless. First out, top of the third. So the first time through the lineup, the Braves go two for nine. And Tanner Roark uses that cupping thing too. You see him with all kinds of circular bruises on his back. That's a great segue to the crab face on the field on Monday, August 22nd. You could enjoy lots of crab sides and all the Budweiser, Bud Light, and soda you can drink. <laughs> Maybe you could even cup some crabs. Who knows? Nats Orioles on the video board. Tickets start just 60 bucks. Go to nationals.com slash crab feast. Yeah, Tanner uses that. You see those big circular hickeys, if you will, all over their back when they do it, and it sucks the toxins out. Ender Inciarte. Base it up the middle, first time up. Then he was caught at home on a ground ball by Kemp when Tanner Roark threw him out. He guides that one with a great swing the other way. Heisey playing over toward the line. Maybe a play at second. Safe. Swipe tag by Trey Turner and Inciarte thinking two all the way. I saw Turner look to the dugout quickly after he made the tag. And Turner saying he tagged him right now. I'm watching him on the field. So if he did tag him, it's going to be close. Good play by Chris Heisey hustling over, getting rid of it quick. One hop throw right on the money. The tag by Turner. And if it got him on the knee before his foot hit, he's out. I just couldn't tell if it got him. I don't know. Roark not on the pitching rubber. Oh, yeah, he won't this get up there. It. Ooh, that's close though. His foot might have been there. Nats will not challenge. Never mind. Well played though, as you mentioned, by Chris Heisey. And here's Eric Ibar hit a fly ball to Heisey first time up. In Ciarte, four for 11 with two hits today in this series. Espinoza was in behind the runner. Throw a little bit up to be real close. There's a daylight watch. Espinoza break in behind with an open glove. Tanner Roark sees it. Screamed out. Wanted the call, but it looked like he got in there. Are they looking? They're looking. They're looking in the Nats dugout. Well, they're not looking. They're talking. They're looking in the clubhouse. What do you got? Ooh, he's out. Yeah, it looked like the fingertips went over the bag before the palm hit, huh? He's out. I mean, he was safe on the last one. He's out on this one. So the nine lives of Ender and Ciarte are over. Mike Everett telling the Braves dugout three times, I had time out. Well, the Braves are contending that Tanner Roark's on the rubber and that you can't challenge once the pitcher's on the rubber. That's what they're arguing.
And since you kind of make up the rules as you go along with challenges, who knows? I think he's out. What do you think? Yeah, he's out. Unless his thumb, <laughs> unless the hangnail off his right thumb hit the bag before the tag. Yeah. So, again, it looks like the fingertip straight up and the palm hit the bag. And had he been tagged. Do you think right now in the headset they're going, uh, what's the heat index again? 112? Yeah, he's out. Is it conclusive, though? Yeah, the official wording, clear and convincing evidence that the call on the field was incorrect. They call him safe. What did we not see that they did or vice versa? So the Nats are out of challenges. And Enciarte remains at second base with one out. Oh, won the count to Ibar. Okay. I guess help me out here. There's the tag. Might have been right about that thumbnail. Might be the thumb. Well, they'll gladly lose that challenge for the one they won last night in the ninth. Oh, one, that ball's going to drop in, so that makes that call big. And here comes Enciarte to score to get the Braves on the board. High bar drives him in with his 26th run of the season, RBI of the season. A little inside out flare to left. Got his hands inside the baseball. Nice piece of hitting. Good read by NCRT. He knew he was going to drop immediately, and the Braves on the board. And now Freddie Freeman with one out. I just never thought when they initiated the replay challenge that there would be so much confusion after the review. Yeah, you figured, okay, they got it right. Yeah. Play on, right? Regardless if it goes against you, it goes for you. Freeman up hacking, and that ball is drifting foul. Freddie Freeman now has a five-game hitting streak, eight for 12 in this series, four for seven, and he's been on base four other times. Hit by a pitch and walked three times. He broke his bat on that swing. So he probably did a lot of damage with that bat, and now it's gone. But I thought Ibar was safe last night. I thought Enciarte was out today. I've been wrong over 50% of the time this year, and we have all kinds of really clear looks at it. I just didn't think there would be this much controversy after the review. One one target away. Freeman reaching, bounce it to Roark, sets up for the throw, guns it, and there's another gun to first. On a slow roller, a one six three with a couple of right arms flinging it around. Well, he feels his position unbelievably. Watch him play the hop with the perfect feed to Espinosa, hit him right in the chest, and then the rifle to first. Nicely done.
little bow to the crowd that he had a play in the first with a throw to third. That looked good. Then hit one hard and foul down the right field line. Pretty good balance right there. Watch out. And then hit one maybe he thought was foul down the left field line, but it clearly hit fair. So a double and an RBI and then scoring on the Anthony Rendon sack fly. So Bryce back, some water on the face. And his second at bat, he lifts one high to right for Marcakis. Trying to ambush there, got a 90 fastball. One out, third inning. Ramos and Rendon, the next two. Pretty good balance right there through the swing, just missed it. Yeah, real good balance. Just missed a tater. I just hope he takes BP on the field in Colorado. That's all I care about. Hmm. He and Wilson can have their own little home run derby. Uh, and I don't know if uh, you folks are aware of it. The jet stream at Coors Field goes to right center. They raised that fence this year. They did. Out by, out by the bullpens. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make. But that bo the ball just flies to right center there. Coors Field tomorrow night. Wilson Ramos, productive ground ball to the right side first time, moved Harper to third. He scored from there on the Rendon sack fly. Sounded like a busted bat, and this one handled by Ibar. Just a little reminder as you enjoy a cold one today, look forward to Miller time later in the game. That's brought to you by Miller Light. Hydrate. After that blizzard that rolled through here this winter, I will never complain about the heat. Bring it on. <laughs> Rendon great at bat first time. A line drive to center for a sacrifice fly. Masson's word of the day, style. Text it to 29292, your chance to win an Anthony Rendon meet and greet. And a haircuttery gift card from Masson. Style to 29292, brought to you by Haircuttery, home of the smile back guarantee. <laughs> 25 pitches, first inning. 14 the second. Pat Holberg liking the outside strike today for both pitchers to right handed batters. Miami has tied that game with the White Sox 2 2 fifth inning. Rendon that's a ball spinning its way to not go foul and a one two three six in a row for Tyrell Jenkins a seven pitch inning for him it's the Nets three one.
fight for your country in a desert somewhere. These are our favorite folks at the ballpark. It's our DynCorp International Troop Recognition. And it's brought to you by DynCorp International, proudly serving our nation for 70 years. Every day, it's just an emotional moment at the ballpark. Wouldn't miss it for anything. Kemp, Marcakis, Beckham. Top four. Tanner Roark, 39 pitches, 26 strikes, so a good ratio so far. A run on four hits. He's been attacking the strike zone, and some of the Braves hitters have been early count aggressive with him. Shift on against Kemp, who hit the 1 2 fielder's choice first time that got Inciarte thrown out at the plate. Jammed him. Good pitch. Two hopper, Anthony Rendon. First out, fourth inning. Our friends from WUSA 9 are with us again today. And with Metro's extensive track work affecting the red line now, avoid the crowding and delays, finding another way around on the WUSA 9 app. Download it now. So wherever those Metro repairs take place, WUSA 9 will show you the way to work or home. I got an app that says don't take the Metro, but pretty simple. Here's Mark Kekas, line drive to center first time. He's had a couple of hard hit balls in the series, but not a lot to show for it. Time given. Marlins ended up picking up three runs in that fifth inning. So they lead the White Sox 3 2. You know, what's weird is that the lead's eight and a half now. I don't even pay attention to their scores anymore. When, it, when it's five, I was looking. You know, it's time to watch the scoreboard, but eight and a half? You take one care. One thing that's going on in the National League is a crazy wild card race. There are a whole bunch of teams right in it. Marlins, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, of course the Dodgers. It's three and one now to Nick Marcakis, the nine year Oriole, second year with the Braves. Yeah, Pat Hoberg likes that outside edge. Tanner Roark, just one strikeout so far. Six ground ball outs, and that's high. That's his first walk of the day. Marcakis in the series, one for 10, and he's aboard with one out. And that's plus members and season plan holders. The Nationals postseason and renewal process has begun. The deadline to purchase your postseason strips is August 31st. Plus, if you renew for 2017 by that same date, you'll receive an extra postseason ticket offer. Log in to your Nationals Access account, contact your account representative, or email ticket info at nationals.com today. Gordon Beckham, a comebacker first time. Fourth inning, one out, 3 1 Nets. Hits are even at four. Challenge fastball and a big swing. Do you remember that throw that Gordon Beckham made early in the season against the Nats in Atlanta? I think it was either opening day or the second day of the season. Wild throw from second. He's made two errors all year. That was one of them. Hmm. Hmm. 
I mean, he's, uh, didn't play a whole lot, not every day, his last couple of years with the White Sox. Braves are playing their 118th game, and this is only his 58th. Chase Peterson, there's a, of course, he's a left handed batter, a whole lot more right handed pitchers around than the lefties. So Peterson, pretty much their regular guy, but he's made a bunch of errors. Nine of them, Adonis Garcia, their third baseman, has made 16. Ibar, their shortstop, 13. Braves are in the bottom four in the league in team defense. Three one again. Up the middle to his left Espinosa. He's going to turn a six three. And the Nats have turned a couple today to shorten Tanner Roark's time in the sun. The fourth inning of Nationals baseball brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com today. Olympic president's race. No wonder team two's falling behind. Only one guy's really rowing. So team one, George, Herbert, Tom. Those guys have to be suffocating in there today. Wow. They take the gold. Or they'll probably they'll probably settle for a bottle of water. <laughs> so here's Robinson. Or an IV. Yeah, forget the metal. I need to hydrate. Clint Robinson base hit up the middle first time in the series two for three. Count two and oh. Fifth, fourth inning now and Tyrell Jenkins approaching 50 pitches. Game roller just went over 50. Boy smoking out there huh. Taking all the way, and it's three and one. Robinson can't get to the 3 2 pitch. First strikeout today by Tyrell Jenkins. They're still around, a few of them. There go the no hitter t shirts for FP and our friends at our Cox Solution stores. And that's in Virginia, so visit Cox.com to find your nearest store. You don't need to be a Cox customer. T shirts available while supplies last. Great in this weather.
That ball pretty well hit by Heisey to left and in front of the track. Matt Kemp is going to grab it. I, I didn't notice until that graphic that the ball is screaming as it leaves the bat on. There goes the no hitter. Is it? Remember the old this week in baseball, the home run, yeah. the ball screaming as it leaves the ballpark, reminiscent of that. Twib notes. Oh, yeah, there it is. I mean, I draw stick figures. That's real good. Whoever did that, thank you. Danny Espinosa walks stranded first time up. Suddenly eight in a row retired by Tyrell Jenkins. Right where they have him played with a shortstop Eric Ibar. So that's nine straight and 10 of the last 11 with only a base on balls since the first inning for the rookie right hander. Summary is brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. The first inning was the good stuff for the Nats. A three spot. Trey Turner with a double and a run. Bryce Harper a double and a run. Tanner Roark grinding. What new? Here's Anthony Recker. Chase Darno. Tyrell Jenkins. Strike one. Fifth inning underway. So for Tanner right now 54 pitches 32 strikes. He struck out Recker looking. You might recall that 3 2 pitch. Anthony thought he had walked. Tossed the bat away and then got called back. This one popped up and straight back. Inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep. Total domination by the Nats over the Braves in this ballpark. 21 games, only two losses. The plus 60 on the runs, runners in scoring position. Pitchers doing their jobs, keeping runs from scoring and keeping guys from simply getting hits for the most part. This year, the Nats lead the Braves 5 and 1 here. Going to Atlanta twice more. 
which is odd considering it's August 14th and the Nationals opened the season there with a short two game series. Yeah, and then they came right here. And Dusty has no idea there was a time when the Nats couldn't beat the Braves. He knows nothing about that. And you know what? I'm glad he doesn't. That's good. That's a good thing. We were pretty sick of it. One and two. Another pitch that got in on the hands of the hitter. Chris Heisey. He knew he had it all the way. Danny Espinosa was out there helping if needed. One out. So let's get into the road trip now. The next five, it'll be Max Scherzer, Jorge De La Rosa tomorrow night. Geo goes against Chad Bettis Tuesday night. Wednesday's a day game, Steven Strasburg and John Gray. Then it's on to four at Turner Field next weekend. And you all know what's coming after that. It's the four day, two at Baltimore, two here, home and home with the Orioles. Looking forward to that. Yeah, always a great crowd series in their park and ours. One ball, one strike. Maybe Michael Phelps will throw out the first pitch in one of those games. That would be cool. Can we get him a Nats cap? <laughs> no, he's, he's an <laughs> Ain't gonna guy. happen. He's an Orioles guy. I mean, he doesn't like, want a medal in two days. Geez. Yeah, it hasn't like, like he's done a whole lot, but I guess maybe they could let him throw out a first. He pitch. is absolutely incredible. Bouncer, Roark. Look at the bare hand. Look at him get rid of it. And look at him get the out. Two down here in the fifth inning. I mean, he's got to be a gold glove contender he for a pitcher, to be. right? Yeah, he has to be, Carp. We've been talking about it for, well, even in 14 when he was a starter, not so much last year, but he has a chance to do it more as a starter this year. You know, Jacob deGrom comes to mind as the best fielding pitcher in the National League besides Tanner Roark. I don't know who's going to get it, but that play should be put on the highlight reel. Name me pitchers that go to their right, falling toward the third base dugout, and barehand the ball to make this throw. Such a tremendous athlete. We talked about him being a state runner up in the championship high school football. And why did he make that play? Yeah, even Tanner can't get to that one. But Danny Espinosa can. On one pitch, Jenkins gone. Tanner Roark is on a roll now. 3 1 Nats halfway through the game. Cuttery, home of the smile back guarantee. No small print, just big smiles. Smile, everybody. You're at the yard, your ball club's ahead, and it's Sunday. Three four zero Nationals, one four one Braves. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Roark, Turner, and Revere. 
When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. So let's check in on some double days, shall we? Nick Banks, 21-year-old outfielder, makes the all-star team with Tyler Watson, the 19-year-old lefty, great ERA, Weston Davis, he's 20. Eight starts, 323 ERA. That's the Auburn double days, the short season for the Nats. I heard that team acts like they invented the game. I know, they think they did. It's all brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. So it's from Auburn to Hagerstown, then Potomac, and then on to Harrisburg and Syracuse, the ladder of the Nats organization. But that thing's way over 100 downstairs, way over. Camera guys with umbrellas. Well done, gentlemen. You are the toughest of them all out there, that's for sure. There's Tanner. Perfect sacrifice bunt on the first pitch. His first at bat. Counts but even one one better hitter than his numbers show. Yeah. Well, he, he had a lot of bad luck. He almost had 30 at bats before he got his first base hit. Right now he's five for 48. He's driven in three runs. Just couldn't buy a hit for the first two months. And he's a guy who likes to hack. He wants to help his team. He's got that Scherzer mentality out there You're when it comes to swinging the bat. Gonna hack right here. He senses a hitter's count, right? Wow. But it's low, three and one. Probably taken right here. Way inside, Tanner Roark will walk to lead off the fifth inning. Second walk, both leadoff jobs by Tyrell Jenkins. He walked Espinosa leading off the second. Our friend Joe Simpson from next door came over and gave us an interesting thought about some of the mannerisms of Tyrell Jenkins compared to the great Ferguson Jenkins. No relation. Tyrell is 6'4", 210. Fergie Jenkins was 6'5", 205. He even wears the stirrups the same as Fergie did. Great Hall of Fame pitcher for the Cubs. Whoa, he'll spin a batter out of there, and that's like Fergie did too. Ball one. Trey, a double and two trips, a run scored today in the series. Seven for 12. Counts even 1-1. One, one. And they just show and bunt their 0-0 to try to milk ball one. And now that Jenkins is throwing a strike, it's game on. High and tight again. That was a changeup, though. And the count, three and one. I think we start calling this triples, traples. What do you think? <laughs> you like traples? How about a nice single to right field? That's a swing that'll impress us as much as anything. How about that sound? Two for three and eight hits against the Braves in this series. And he's going to Colorado locked in. Stay hot, Trey Turner. Hey, get to a 3-1 count. Don't try to do too much. Look like a little cutter there from Jenkins, and he just uses the hole created by the leadoff walk. Nice piece of hitting. Yeah. 
He's becoming friends with Freddie Freeman at first because he's been on so much. Yeah. They're having a little chat. There's Ben Revere. Big guns coming up. Harper Ramos. Is he bunting? Braves think so. They're pinching at the corners. And uh, that was not a pitch to bunt to try to move a couple of guys. Ben couldn't lay off. Steve Reich one. And talk about the bunt defense they're putting on right now. The only reason you let Ben Revere swing away here is because even if he hits a ground ball, it's going to be, you know, Ben on first base and Tanner on third. It's unlikely that he'll hit into a double play. With his speed, so we'll see if Dusty keeps the bun on here. Oh, one. He does. Oh, and two now. Something about the pitcher out of the stretch, huh? 130 points higher with men on base. He is seven for his last 17 over five games, scoring five runs. Three for nine in this series with a walk. Into the three o'clock hour here at Nationals Park. Hardy crowd on hand. A lot of folks gravitating as they should toward the shade. And they saw some first inning fireworks, but the Nats have not had a run since. And the Turner base hit here, the first hit since the first inning. O2 again to Revere. And Ben will hop back from that pitch well off the plate. Bullpen getting busy with Madison Youngener. Close. Two and two, good take. Nissan will track it. That four seam fastball looked like it just missed away. Now it's three and two. Yeah, you don't start the pitcher here. Everybody will be right where they're at. Bryce Harper on deck. Well, Ben didn't look real comfortable bunting, but he's had three takes to get this thing full. Hits it hard the other way. That's going to take away the double play possibility as Darno couldn't glove it cleanly. Tanner Roark will get to go sit down. That's the best case scenario for the Nats. They're up by two. Their pitcher gets to go sit down. Now you got your two fastest guys on base. So a good trade of runners, if you will, for Bryce Harper. Anything in the gap scores everybody. First inning, Bryce drove in his 58th run of the year on his 14th double. And Trey Turner's fast enough to steal third with a lefty up, so the Braves have to keep him close at second. Ben Revere will be watching his every move.
1 0 pitch and that's off speed outside. Couple of good takes lower half real slow. He's had some good hacks here today looking to do damage right here right now. Bryce staying under control on a 2 0 pitch and now 3 and 0. Base is loaded. Well, good patient at bat. He didn't force the issue there. He saw the ball big. His head was still. His feet were slow. So three good at bats in my book for Bryce in his first game back. And Wilson just... Ramos with the bases loaded now in the fifth inning. A chance to take this game and really bust it open. He's hit a couple of ground ball outs today, and in the series, the Braves have him 0 for 6. Two walks in the inning. Opposite field hit by Turner. Wilson, great numbers with the bases loaded career. Not biting on the off speed inside. Two and zero. Oh. Well, you see, Jenkins wanted that pitch. He dropped his shoulders after with the body language, saying he thought it was a strike. But you can't be throwing this many balls and hope to get the borderline pitches. And now you're really up against it. Been a strike all day out there. Good take. You don't want to swing at that. That's a ground ball. He's looking for something more elevated with more plate. Turner, Revere, Harper. Great speed. Strong bat in the box. And Wilson not biting on that one, which was low and away. Now a crucial pitch for the Braves and a pitch of opportunity for the Nats. Three one game fifth inning bases loaded one out. To right. Pretty well hit. Mark Cake is drifting to it. Catches up in the corner. And two runners will tag up. Scoring is Turner. Revere went back to tag and got from second to third. Four one Washington. Wilson Ramos RBI number sixty four. Oh, nice at bat. He finally got something he could handle. Drove it the other way. Nice play by Nick Markakis with his son lighting up his sunglasses. You were thinking that was going to be a tough chance. Trey Turner scores four to one. Anthony Rendon next. 0 for one with a sacrifice fly. He's driven in 51 now. As we learned last night, you can never have enough runs. <laughs> Not when the ball's flying like it is in August. That's a low throw right into the reach back to the bag of Bryce Harper. Yeah, these are the dog days, aren't they? Game number 116. 46 more after this.
Yeah, time of possession definitely favoring the Nats today. The Braves have been standing out on defense a long time on a hot day. And there is nothing worse when it's hot or cold and your pitcher going 2-0 to everybody. You're standing on defense going, come on, just throw strikes. We'll make the play behind you. Give us a chance. Rendon to left. High and deep. See you later. His second homer of the series. A four RBI day and the Nets go up seven to one. That's eight RBI in his last four games. 15th home run of the year. Stay hot Anthony Rendon. Now the dude is digging it. They keep falling behind to good hitters. That's going to happen at this level. And Anthony Rendon making Tyrell Jenkins pay. He's done for the day. The Nats will get seven runs off him in four and two thirds. Run Tater, two outs. And check out the 2 0 fastball from Tyrell Jenkins right down the middle. Maybe a little arm side run to it. But right into Anthony Rendon's power zone. And he has been swinging some kind of bats this year. Looking like 24 Anthony, 2014 Anthony Rendon again. And that was a big swing. Clint Robinson facing 25 year old Madison Youngener. Originally drafted by the Red Sox out of South Carolina. Granted free agency by the Sox last year after six years in their organization. Brave signed him as a free agent last November. Not related to Madison Bumgarner. Only his fourth big league appearance all with Atlanta this year. Fastball 95, curveball 81, occasional change at 86. Robinson one for two. Funky delivery.
2 and 2 to Clint. Beckham in short right field. Let's do Lexus home runs right now. Our Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Health System for every Tater and Nats player hits this season. So keep them coming. It's for a wonderful cause. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. 153 of them this year. St. Louis has 160. They played the Cubs in the Sunday night game. Two two and that's in the dirt. And Robinson, another great swing. Clint Robinson. Two for three today, and he's three for five in this weekend series. Getting a start today after a couple of pinch hitting appearances. Beautiful swing by Clint, second hit of the day. The Braves have been standing on defense for 21 minutes on a 99 degree day. That is tough. There's Chris Heisey. Ground ball to short, fly ball to left. And long count by the reliever to his first two hitters. Heisey hits one to le left center. Just a little bit of tail of it back to Inciarte, and that's it. Big inning for the Nationals. Their biggest of the day when they score four. Three brought in by Anthony Rendon. So this will be number 15. RBI total shoots up to 54. Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. The Marlins lost Giancarlo Stanton 
with a groin injury on the last play of the game last night and one of their starters Adam Conley goes on the DL the Mets get Cespedes and as Drupal Cabrera next weekend they expect and Corey Seager of the Dodgers five straight multi hit games 11 for 22 the Make Dodgers are one game behind the Giants in the West Make a little run on MVP first pitch sixth inning Ender in Ciarte. Bryce Harper fighting that sun right to the last second. And here's Tanner Roark's afternoon. Well, I just got used to this. We're getting used to this. And power in the strike zone, fielding his position like no other. The beautiful feed to Danny Espinosa to start the 1 6 3. And then another double play turned so smoothly by Danny. That ball was heading for the middle, showed a lot of range. And how about speaking of range, Tanner Roark off the mound. Falling toward third base in a bare hand play with a nice pick by Clint Robinson. Roark to work on Eric Ibar now, and he takes a strike. So the Braves embark on their third time through. So today, it's, it's kind of the way Tanner rolls. First time through, they'll get a couple of hits because he's out there attacking the strike zone. Then he gets more comfortable and then you've talked about this when he gets to his third time around he has set up some hitters earlier who have a hard time solving him later in the game. Yeah don't try to think with them. I bar RBI single last time made it a 3 1 game back in the third. And then Tanner got that big double play ball, the 1 6 3 on Freddie Freeman. Since then, the Braves won base on balls. Pitch count good for the sixth inning. I mean, we've talked a lot about heat and grips with pitchers. But I feel like with Tanner Roark, it could be 105 or 45, and you don't know the difference. I mean, obviously, he's putting some rosin on, but have we talked about not having a grip or ball slipping or him laboring in the heat once today? And would we be saying anything if it was 35 degrees about? He just, he just, it's his day. He gets the ball and he throws strikes. Look at that run back fastball to strike out Eric Ibar. Batter bailing and it's right in there according to Mercedes Benz. The run back to Seamer, give up on it, it comes back. I mean right there you're saying it's gonna hit me. Yeah, I can't swing and then it runs back for a strike. Here's Freddie Freeman, bases empty, two outs. Base hit and two trips. He's going to get another rip out there, and Ben Revere has to play it on a hop. Freddie Freeman, five for nine in the series. Two homers, five RBIs, hit by a pitch, three walks. Get out of town. Braves are off tomorrow. They have the Twins in for a couple before the Nats come in. There's Matt Kemp, couple of ground balls. He's 0 for 2. Braves box. So the first inning got two hits for them. NCRT Freeman, they didn't score. And then it was the NCRT one out double, the I bar single in the third, the extent of their scoring and the extent of their hitting up until a moment ago. I mean, and on top of the heat, to add to my point, it's sunny out. I mean, the other two games have been a night, so it's even worse. 
And he is just plow horsing along. Tanner Roark, 25th game of the year, 24th start. And hopefully one more number to add to that in a moment. One and two to Kemp. Ramos sets up outside. That's up and away. Goes with the hook and Wilson Ramos out to block that and block that in good fashion. Got everything behind that ball. Freddie Freeman will be on the move here with two outs. A little bit outside, two on, two out for Nick Markakis. Pretty close pitch right here, 3 2. I think maybe if Wilson catches it, he gets the call right on the corner. Roark's been throwing strikes all day, but it's ball four to Matt Kemp. Markakis, 0 for 1 with a walk today. By the way, a footnote on Tanner after two double play balls today, 21 on the year now. Team grounding into double plays against him. Second in the National League. 21. Well, it's not just by luck. He pitches in the bottom part of the zone when he wants a double play. He throws the sinker down, pitches below the strike zone, lowers his sights, and gets a lot of grounders. That's by design. Up and in. Strike zone getting tiny all of a sudden here in the sixth. Two on Markakis breaking his bat. There's Danny Espinoza. So here's that other number. Remember I said 24th start. He's now gone at least six innings, 20 of those times. And he'll be going for 15 times seven next inning out.
Center. As we go to the bottom of the six, Cedarita tickets presented by Anheuser-Busch are on sale right now. You can receive an upper gallery ticket and free beer or Rita products starting just 21 bucks. Some restrictions apply for all the details and to purchase your Cedarita ticket, visit nationals.com slash Rita. Yeah, here's some upper level stuff. Dana Roar coming out on deck. He's gone six for the 20th time this year. He'll bet after Danny Espinosa and before Trey Turner here, bottom six. Danny 0 for 1 with a base on balls. And another foul off to that side. Here's the Nats box score and you can talk about the first inning and the fifth inning. Trey Turner is two for three. Ben Rivera scored a couple of runs. Harper has scored twice. Driven in a run. Rendon four RBI sack fly homer. So Harper RBI in the first with Rendon and then Anthony drives in three in the fifth after Ramos hits a sack fly just offense up and down. Espinosa gashes one right side. Backhand pickup, well done by Gordon Beckham for the first out. Tanner Roark's been perfect at the plate with a sacrifice and a walk. They're working on the tracks at Metro, so it's right now affecting the red line. Avoid the crowding and delays. Find another way around by using the WUSA 9 app. Download it now. Good to have our friends from WUSA 9 with us again today. Strike one to Tanner Roark. You know, normally I don't believe in, you know, pitchers striking out and going back and sitting down. If you're in shape to pitch and it's your day and you play once out every five days, get on base. It shouldn't affect you. But today, I think the circumstances are a little different. Seven to one lead, I don't think, well, <laughs> I don't think it's good if he's on base right here. Just I there. totally agree with you. Normally there's I'm a guy. There's a guy down the down the hall here who does too. Don Sutton used to make that point a lot because he's a guy who pitched deep into ball games, and there are just some days when the rules change a little. The unwritten rules, as they are. Yeah, normally I don't buy it. Oh, he was on base. It affected him. If you're in good enough shape to pitch nine innings, you should be good enough shape to run around the bases once or twice. But when it's 108 heat index, go back to the dugout. Tanner's trying to hit a homer. That's one way to get to the dugout. <laughs> you never know when his first might come, the way he makes contact. That ball hit the dirt on its way in. One ball, two strikes. There's that man. <laughs> One and two as he battles on. Two and two. Swing and a miss. 
Well, if you missed the first inning, Trey Turner, what new, got the party started with a double, the one he was looking for last night. So sort of a cycle, close enough for me anyways. Then Ben Revere lays down a beauty right here, and Anthony Recker in a hurry because of the Revere speed throws it down the right field line. That would score Trey Turner. Then welcome back Bryce Harper, a double down the left field line. That scores Ben Revere. And the Nats with three in the first. Bryce would go on to score. Trainer, Trey Turner having an amazing series. That fastball bends him back. Eight for 13. Six runs. A homer, two steals. Two RBIs. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be a hot topic in the pre-series meeting tomorrow in Colorado. Yeah, that's pretty good when they're talking about your leadoff guy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure Walt Weiss is thinking, how do we get this guy out? We have to get this guy out. Wow. Couldn't hit it any harder. Great grab by Chase Darno puts Freddie Freeman into foul territory. And that's a hard one, two, three for the Nats because Espinosa hit the ball hard as well. How locked in is Trey Turner? We're going to the seventh. The Nats, 7 1. mound for the Nationals. Now Tanner's always been considered a ground ball pitcher, but that's something that he's actually gotten better at over the last few years. His ground ball rate this year, a career best 50.5%. It's not easy to have a ground ball rate over 50%, but Tanner's done that this year significantly better than his 41% ground ball rate in his stellar 2014 season. And what happens when you get a lot of ground balls? You're setting yourself up for a lot of double plays. As Bob mentioned earlier, 21 double plays induced by Tanner this year. Second most in the National League, keeping the ball down, giving his defense a chance to make plays behind him, guys. 10 of 18 outs on the ground today, Dan. Thank you. Over 2 million vehicles sold in counting at Coons.com. There's Gordon Beckham. He had one of those double play balls. He's way out ahead of that one. Seventh inning underway. The only Carlos Martinez of St. Louis with 25 more. Opponent double plays on the ground. And there's another one as if on cue. 11 on the day. Rendon takes care of that. Wrecker and Darno, 7 and 8, the next two Atlanta Braves. Follow the Nationals live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day live game video highlights and stat cast. Download MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Eric O'Flaherty. 
If the Braves go to a fourth hitter, they'll have to hit for the pitcher here in the seventh. Anthony Recker 0 for 2, as is Chase Darno. But you want to talk about the turnaround for Tanner Roark's season. I think it came right at the end of April. You remember the Marlins got him a couple of times for four runs and then five. And there was some thought down there that he was tipping his pitches. Then he started flopping that glove around and it turned around his whole season, whether he was or not. At least it gave him peace of mind to know that, hey, now they don't know what's coming. I'm going to flop my glove around. I'm not going to move it on certain pitches and not move it on other pitches and maybe tip off the hitter on what I'm throwing. So if I move it on every pitch, they don't know. Ever since he did that, his season has been amazing. Turning on that one, hitting in a mile foul, Anthony Recker. Boy, pitch count today, economical. He's between 13 and 14 pitches per inning. Some guys in the sun stretching, others hanging in the shade back there. I mean, do you think they get Chick-fil-A during the game? Because it looks like a Chick-fil-A store down there. <laughs> they get nuggets or just a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Is there somebody, they, is there a window there they just order? Well, if they're hungry? Well, every day but Sunday. They are closed yeah, today. That's right. It's closed. Sorry, guys. No Chick-fil-A today. I was told last time we were in New York, it's the longest line in Manhattan for lunch. That's true. One ball and two strikes to Wrecker. Base is empty, one out, top of the seventh. 2 2 pitch. I mean, I think the comparison to Greg Maddox ish with Tanner Roark is accurate. He throws the front hip sinker, he fields his position well, he keeps you guessing up there. He's the kind of hitter that you think you got, and you look up and you're 0 for 4 with a couple of line outs and maybe a strikeout or two. He's smart, you can't read his mind. And I think Mike Maddox has had a big effect on Tanner Roark this year. 2-2 two -two again. Swing and a miss on a big breaking ball. Boy, did he pop one off there. Third K of the day, Nissan will track it. And the term that hitters always used to use with Greg Maddox was comfortable over. He'd give you that over for 4 that you thought, oh, man, I was right on him today. And you see the same thing when Tanner's on the mound. Hitters are on him. He keeps you guessing. Next thing you look up, you're 0 for 4. Pretty curveball right there for strike three. Hmm. Great tumbling action on that Exmo. Strike one now to Chase Darno, the number eight hitter. Here's Jace Peterson to hit four. Madison Youngener, if the inning gets that far. This year, Tanner Roark has pitched seven innings or more with no runs allowed seven times. Nobody's done that. There are some other numbers that follow right behind that. And a 1 1 with two outs. That's a strike. Braves are working their tails off to hit foul balls here against him in this inning. I mean, nobody coming close to centering anything. Two-two. 
Well, he's the lowest hard hit rate against in the National League with 23.1%. So everything is moving. It's hard to square up. That means opposing hitters hit a ball hard only 23.1% against Tanner Roark. Actually, that's the best in baseball. Right back to him. So now this is 10 times this year, seven innings, one run or fewer. And Tanner Roark just pitched seven innings for the 15th time overall in 24 starts. He is truly amazing. Telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Seventh inning stretch has come and gone. D.C. Washington has regaled us again today. And the Potomac Nationals start a three-game weekend homestand Friday. A lot of highlights, including a team photo giveaway, a, fa a Friday family pack feature, a family fun day Sunday, post-game fireworks on the 21st, one week from today. Join the party at the Fitz, 703-590-2311 or PotomacNationals.com. 29,107 here today, and here comes Eric O'Flaherty, the 31-year-old left-hander. Nats know him well, 37th appearance. A fastball 91, slider 84, occasional changeup at 86. Opponents hitting 315 against the Braves' lefty this year. And while I'm thinking of it, D.C. Washington is the man. And I hope that if the Nats get to the playoffs that he sings the national anthem in game one. Just on my wish list. He's good luck. I'll and he fires every me game. Up. Yeah. Ben Revere facing O'Flaherty for the first time. Oliver Perez just starting his warm up tosses. Braves have eight, nine, and one due up in the eighth. And a little roller, that ball spinning and spinning and underhanded away by O'Flaherty. And Ben Revere has forced two battery members into bad throws today. That one just was stumbling and bumbling right from the start. 
Well, the English on this ball fooled O'Flaherty, and that's where it starts to get weird. Watch the second hop, or maybe the first hop right here. It kind of checks up away from him. You can't really see at that angle, then just all out panic sets in. I think you have to rule that a hit just based on the spin and an error. You give him a hit for getting to first and an error for getting to second. This spin right here, watch, just kind of checks away from him and then he fans and ugh. Yeah, they haven't posted a hit. They have posted the error, so we'll wait and see. Bryce Harper. On base twice, a double with an RBI, a walk, two runs scored. O'Flaherty against Harper. It's a two for eight career matchup with a walk and two RBIs. And O'Flaherty wants to talk to Anthony Recker. Hey, you know, the, the one thing I'm taking away from this series against the Braves is how speed affects the defense. We've seen it so many times with Trey Turner and Ben Revere at the top of the order. And it's almost like with that one two combination, it'll be interesting to see if Dusty stays with it. Because. I mean, we've seen it affect the Braves. We've seen panic in some plays that you don't see normally. It's because of Ben Revere's speed and Trey Turner's speed. And if those two are on together, forget about it. Way inside to Bryce. Fastball really sailing. 2 0. Oh. Bryce is at bat, very key in the fifth inning. Real patient up there, had a chance to do some damage, wasn't jumpy. That'll be outside the bag and foul. Two balls, two strikes. Seven seven oh Nats, one five two Braves. Off speed down in the zone, got him. One out, seventh inning. How many pounds do you think Wilson Ramos has lost today? I wish we would have waited before the game and after. Just in water weight alone. I think more than five. You know, I, I've heard of catchers losing between five and ten pounds in a game. Usually somewhere in the middle of that. I'll tell you what, based on the spread that's going to be on the plane to Colorado, it's real easy to game back. <laughs> real easy. It's a flying food fortress. That's a big power zone from down and in to up and away for the big fellow. That up and away represents fly balls that go over the scoreboard. Way outside, 1-1. I mean, Two and one. for those of you that don't know, Major League Charter is the only way to fly. I mean, the bus pulls up right to the plane. You're the only ones on it, our travel crew. It's basically all you could eat with food at every stop. There's appetizers when you get on. 
all kinds of different food on a menu. You can eat the whole flight if you want. It's basically like going on a cruise. Lots of bottled water. Lots, Lots of bottled water. Dan and I choose to hydrate with other products, but I mean, it's, it's the only way to go. It's the big leagues for sure. Wilson Ramos battling here on a two ball, two strike count. I'm showing 99 degrees in the district right now. The record for this date, 100 back in 1943. Come on, let's do it. We can do it. One more degree. It's got to be hot down on that field. Hotter than 99 for sure. 2-2. Two -two. Heard Johnny and Phil had a very rough broadcast that day. Three, two, Ramos jammed. This fly ball flirting with the right field line, and it's fair. Ramos gets a base hit. Revere keeps coming all the way home, and he scores on a single. He had to kind of hold up a little bit. Nobody knew for sure it was falling. And Wilson Ramos gets RBI number 65 to today. I'm telling you, it's, we see with Daniel Murphy all the time, when it's your year, it's your year. But the approach, he didn't roll over there. I mean, a lot of guys on that O'Flaherty slider hit a ground ball to third, but because he fought to get his hands inside, something good happened. I mean, instead of a ground ball to third, 5-3, and there's two outs to the runner on second, hands in the right slot, gets a blooper. Great read by Ben Revere to score the Nats' eighth run of the day. Anthony Rendon, another big day. One for two. Sack fly, three run homer in the series, two hits, and he's produced six runs. It's on the outside edge, no balls, two strikes. On base, 20 games in a row. He's hit safely 18 of his last 23. Just so under the radar. I mean, he's the Tanner Roark of position players. Agreed. So quiet, unassuming, just goes about his business every day, makes every play at third base, gives you great at bats every night. Doesn't want to be in the spotlight, just likes to play baseball and win. Chopper third base way, backhand pickup, and a quick throw by Chase Darno. Two outs. And because he doesn't want to be in the spotlight, we're going to give him our Miller moment, just like we promised you earlier in the game. It's Miller time, brought to you by Anthony Rendon and Miller Light. There's his 15th tater of the year, right down Broadway. A little run back there from Tyrell Jenkins, and Anthony Rendon goes into the Braves' bullpen. The big blow of this game, the three-run bomb in the fifth inning. Anthony Rendon, two home runs away from 50 career. Clint Robinson's had a very nice day, two for three. He faces O'Flaherty for the first time. That one goes inside, one ball, one strike. Another great thing about what the Nats have done today, with Harper coming into the lineup, kind of put some other guys back and made the lineup more stable. It also gives Daniel Murphy and Jason Worth, because it's eight to one, a chance for a true day off. And we've seen on some Sunday games earlier, 
that it's been hard to give guys day off days off if it's a tight game and you might need a pinch hitter or a couple of innings or more than a couple of innings in the field. Those Minnesota and Pittsburgh games coming to mind. Close and it's three and two. And plus playing at altitude to wear you out, it's no joke. Pardon me, two two count. Yeah, it's gonna be hot in Colorado. They're showing 90 plus for the first two days and near 90 the third day. Robinson to left. Matt Kemp. That's a pick up a run on a Wilson Ramos bloop and some base running by Ben Revere. It's 8 1 into the eighth. Max Scherzer, who is 13 and or rather 12 and 7, we hope 13 and 7, late tomorrow night, takes on the hard hitting and always dangerous Carlos Gonzalez, DJ LeMayhew, and those Colorado Rockies. First of a three game series out there. Night games on Monday and Tuesday, and then the day game Wednesday. Jorge De La Rosa for the Rocks tomorrow night. And as they announce Jace Peterson, Dusty's going to come out and give Tanner Roark a chance for a big time walk off ovation right about now. I think I'm going to join him.
five innings today. A couple of walks, three strikeouts. Right with the temperature, 99 pitches, 66 strikes. So 15 times he goes seven this year. Here's Oliver Perez against Jace Peterson. Top of the eighth underway. Had him reaching and a pop up to Danny Espinoza. <laughs> Top of the order, Inciarte and Ibar, the next two. Well, they had a close battle all day in Miami at the end. The Marlins beat the White Sox five to four to break a three game losing streak. And Oliver comes out throwing strikes. Inciarte stepping in. Two for three today with a single, a double, and the only Atlanta run scored. Tanner Roark gave them one hit after the third inning. And you know Tanner could have gone another inning. But hey, six run game, get six outs from the bullpen and get on the plane. Nice pitch against the Braves again next time. How about that? A drive to left and Chris Heisey right there, two outs. By the way, Tanner also finished with 12 ground ball outs. Taking Dan's report a step further with his efficiency in that department and two double play balls among those. Eric Ibar next with Freddie Freeman on deck here in the eighth. Oliver Perez, 50th appearance. Pop up. That'll happen when the pitcher turns his back on you and then it gets on you in a hurry. Clint Robinson takes it. Oliver, one of his quickest innings of the year. Bottom of the eighth, it's all nationals. And brought to you by University of Maryland, University College, and by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years, federally insured by NCUA. There's not much scaffolding left on the dome. Looking beautiful. We're going to the bottom of the eighth, and the scoreboard looks great here as well. This is Ryan Weber. 26 year old right hander from St. Petersburg, Florida. Drafted by the Phillies originally. And for the Braves this year, it'll be his eighth appearance. All in relief. He didn't sign, went to college, and then the Braves signed him out of St. Petersburg College. Chris Heisey. Danny Espinosa, then the number nine spot. Looks like Matt Belisle might be throwing out in the right field bullpen. 
All right, Chris Heisey needs a feel-good knock right here. Yeah, 0 for 5 in the series. There's Matt. And the ball fouled straight down. Chris Heisey facing Ryan Weber for the first time. Got a fast ball and it goes foul on the last hop before the bag. So he'll come back. Byron Kerr is giving Johnny a little relief today. He's with Ray Knight. It's our Nats Extra Post Game Show presented from left field by W.B. Mason when this one's over. So the gold glove is voted on by managers and players, or managers and coaches in each league. So if anyone's paying attention to Tanner Roark and how he feels his position, you think he's going to get some votes. Zach Greinke won it last year. Heisey with a long ball to left center, and it is gone. That's more than a feel-good knock. It's all four for Heisey. Sixth of the year, 10th RBI, and the Nationals lead 9-1. to one. You want to feel a part of it on a day like this, don't you? Well, he's been a part of it all year, but that just is a bench guy when you get a spot start and you turn an 0-for-3 into a 1-for-4 with a tater. It feels like you just went 4-for-4. Four four. So the Wolfpack in missing man formation with Steven Drew out. Chris Heisey picking him up with a homer. Yeah, I love the reaction in the dugout when those guys come through with something big. They are just adored by their teammates. Well, you know why? It's because when they get their chance, they do something, number one. Number two, Chris Heisey, Stephen Drew are always helping guys out when they're not playing. Clint Robinson, too. You always see him talking to starters, kind of evaluating swings. Those are the guys you go to as an everyday guy when you come in, into the bench after an at bat. Hey, how'd I look right there? And they'll give you honest answers. Oh, I see you flying open a little bit. Try to keep that front side closed. Sit on a slider right here. You know he's going to throw whatever. You know, when you have veteran bench guys, they're like in game coaches. You can go pick their brains, too. 0 oh, 2, and Espinosa guides it the other way with a swing that ended up one handed. He hits it about 320 that hits off the railing down there. Your value as a bench guy isn't always. Your numbers. It's what you bring to the clubhouse, what you bring to the dugout during a game. And when you get your chance and you do something, everyone's rooting for you. That is a nice way to turn an 0 for 3 into a 1 for 4. Nicely done. And a foie at the end. Swing and a miss. Espinosa down. First out eighth inning and Wilmer Defoe will be hitting for Oliver Perez. Mercedes Benz will track that nasty breaking ball. Here's Wilmer Defoe who started the game on Friday night. He's seven for 21. Three RBIs on the year. One for four in that starting assignment in game one. Another thing about today's game, if Perez and Belial can get through these last two innings, 
you go to Colorado with your bullpen fully loaded. Defoe getting down the line in a hurry and thrown out there by Chase Darno. Two outs. The Nats have all of a sudden turned into a track team. <laughs> they have. And that means energy, too. It does. Speed doesn't slump. When you go 440 relay team, this this is your anchor right here. Maybe Ben Revere's your first leg. Bryce in the middle or Espinosa and then Defoe too. Three Turner win. has faced Ryan Weber before. Won a lot of races, wouldn't it? In the big leagues, those I four. I think so. I think they would win the 90. The 180 and the 360. Kemp going back. I mean, Trey Turner broke his bat and almost hit the left field wall. Lead off homer by Chris Heisey puts on another run for the Nats. They score nine runs on nine hits today. Heisey checks in with his sixth of the year. Pitching, running, hitting. It's all Washington today. from the Braves. Nine to one as we go to the top of the ninth. It is time for Toyota K's for Kids. $37 is the donation and that goes to the Children's Inn at NIH. Every time a Nats pitcher strikes out another batter with a called third strike or a swinging third strike, it doesn't matter. Toyota will help children and their families with that donation for every strikeout. Here's Matt Belisle making his 28th appearance. ERA great. Not a strikeout guy, he just tries to get quick outs. Freeman, Kemp, Markakis, 3 4 5 for the Braves. Shift on for Freddie Freeman, who's had another good day. Two singles today. Five for nine against the Nats, with five batted in in this series. He's extended his hitting streak to five games, nine for his last. 14. I'm most happy for our fans because there's a big old cloud shading the ballpark right now here in the ninth inning. And the players. Three and oh. By the way, the Rockies are in Philadelphia. We'll probably fly home. Or rather to Colorado a little bit ahead of them they're in the seventh inning up in Philly trailing seven to four and Matt Belisle didn't want to walk Freddie Freeman on four but he did but for some pitchers maybe not a bad thing you just want outs at this stage and Kemp and Markakis the next two well it's not a good thing when you're up by eight.
Matt Kempo for two with a walk. Tell you what, he just made a heck of a play and left. I thought that ball was over his head. He reached up at the last second and maybe took another triple away from Trey Turner because who knows what happens if he reaches for that and misses it, it hits up off the fence with Trey Speed. I mean, I think he got fooled. It, Trey broke his bat on this. So just shows you the buggy whip he's featured right now to throw one out there that far that almost fooled Matt Kemp. He made up for it at the end with a nice play. I think it fooled all of us. There's some gas upstairs. One ball and two strikes. Shot. Rendon got it cleanly. And then Turner turns the 5 4 3. The Nats third double play of the day. 109 on the year. They're in the top five in the league in that. Well, nice job, Matt Belisle, getting the ground ball after the leadoff walk. Good play by Anthony Rendon. Ball was hit pretty hard by Matt Kemp, but as soon as he fields this thing and a good feed to trade Turner, it's. An easy five, four, three double play. Look at him, Anthony Rendon being soft with the hard one hopper. Knows he has plenty of time, good feed, nicely done. There's Nick Markakis for the Braves. Nats one out away from going. 22 games over 500. And they could wrap up a five and three homestand here. Beating the Giants, splitting with the Indians, and another series win in the offing right here. Mark Akers drills it to left center. Chris Heisey is there. Bullpen gets the job done in pretty quick fashion after Tanner Roark had a fantastic day, and the Nets.